Tanya, what are you doing? I'm testing the flow heater. This is not how you test a flow heater. Come on, I'll show you. Okay. Hello and welcome. Today we are in the TNI lab in Waldorf and we are going to learn how to use a Kanthal flow heater. With me, I have my colleague Lucas Wehmeyer who will show us how to do that. Good to have you here, Lucas. Good to be here, Tanya. So, um, I see this flow heater. Can you tell me a little more about it? So, this is a 40 kilowatt flow heater. Mm -hmm. We have a standard range from 3.5 kilowatts up to 60 kilowatts. Okay, and I see a lot of accessories here as well. So, yeah, we have brought a mass flow meter, mm -hmm. which controls and uh, supervises the flow through okay. it. We have a control, control cabinet, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, the flow heater itself. And uh, do we need all these products to run a flow heater? No, you don't need all of these products, but having these bears several advantages. Okay, so we'll talk about those advantages later, but right now let's just pack it up a little bit and see how to set it up. Sure. We have traveled back in time and Lucas, I see that the Kanthal flow heater is not set up or mounted yet, so can you please show me how to do that? Sure. So first, when handling the flow heater, you have to be careful carry it on the main tube, on the main pipe, do not mm -hmm. carry it on the temperature sensors or the electrical cables. So then we position it safely, mount it with screws in our case, we have it here on a test bench. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we want to start with is the thermal insulation. Okay. Yeah. So we have prepared here a micropores insulation with a gas thermocouple, which yeah. we will put in the outlet mm -hmm. so that we know the gas temperature. Okay. Um, we have another temperature sensor here, which is the internal temperature sensor, which we will also connect to the uh, control cabinet. So that's what, what we're going to do now. Okay. Oop, for that. So do you want to help me with this? Yes, sure. Yes, wonderful. So this is a miniature plug, okay. which just goes in here. Okay, so I just yeah. plug this in Just like plug this. it in, there's only one way you can do it. And I will do the same for the outlet. So okay. this we have here now. Okay, Right. now let's come to the gas supply, mm -hmm. yeah? We have a mass flow meter to supervise the, the gas flow. Do you want to screw it on? Yes. Yeah? Okay, there you go. So this helps uh, to prevent failure from low flow. Okay. So if the, the gas flow is too low, it can damage the flow heater. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we have this sensor for. Okay. So yeah, we'll okay. give it another little turn and then we'll put it in and okay. fasten it. So, uh, so what kind of gases can be used? Uh, we use non-hazardous gases, mm -hmm. so air, nitrogen, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, in our case, we use air. But other gases are available on request. Talk mm -hmm. to your Kanto flow heater salesperson mm -hmm. responsible. Um, and then, yeah, we have multiple options for here. Yeah, so. okay. And are there any important steps to remember while setting this up? So the setting up, as we're doing it right now, um, we're connecting the temperature sensors and the mass flow sensor first. We're putting on the insulation and then we do the electrical part last so we work safely okay yeah um, we will do in the end a um, measurement of the resistances mm -hmm. to see that they're symmetrical yeah. and we will measure the insulation resistance to make sure that the flow heater is electrically safe and now that we have connected the air it's mm -hmm. time to connect everything the sensors mm -hmm. and the, uh, the power cable to our control cabinet mm -hmm. So Lucas, is this a control cabinet? Yes, this is a Kantal control cabinet. Mm -hmm. And I think the first thing we should do is connect all our sensors and the flow heater itself. Okay. So we have these Harting connectors, mm -hmm. easy to use, easy plug in yeah. and connect. Then we have our temperature sensors from mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. We have the mass flow meter mm -hmm. that we connected. And we have a supply to the blower, so we can control the blower and the amount of gas going okay. through the heater. Now that we're all set up, mm -hmm. all connected, mm -hmm. you can switch on the flow heater uh, control cabinet by turning the red lever. This way, right? Yes, wonderful. So we use these control cabinets because we have a patented heating cycle. So mm -hmm. we use certain features and parameters 
to prolong the lifetime of the flow eater to make it safe in operation and easy to use. Mm -hmm. We use UMO control cabinets uh, in total, so UMO uh, panels, which are easy to use, touch screens, so everything's very nice. Mm -hmm. And the thyristors are UMO as well. Okay, so I think it's on now. Yes, so it has switched on. We are on the language selection page. Let's select English. Mm -hmm. And then we are already at the main page. So as you can see, everything is quite simple mm -hmm. in here. We have a switch on and off button, yep. um, which of course switches on and off the system. Um, we have a first temperature sensor, so the thermocouple that is inside of the heater. The second thermocouple is the one that we use on the outlet for the gas control. Then we can enter a final set point, so the temperature that we want the flow to, to operate on and then it will create a ramp towards that. And we can also con control the blower, so the amount of air, in our case air, that's going through the heater um, in percentage. So that we can do as well. Okay, that sounds pretty easy, but what if the control system does not work as planned? Yeah, that can happen. There are some things that we can work with. So as you can see, we have a red alarm bell down here, so there is an alarm. Um, some things that can go wrong is that the, the temperature inside of the flow heater is too high, mm -hmm. then the control cabinet will switch off. Um, we can have too low flow, so not enough gas going through the heater. It will recognize it and it will also cause an alarm and a fault. Um, and of course, any electric fault itself will also um, shut down the, the control cabinet and um, result in an alarm. Okay, and can one control cabinet be used for multiple flow heaters? So currently with these control cabinets, it's not possible, but we have a partner and we can develop custom solutions for multiple flow heaters in the end. Yeah. So enough theory today. Can we see the flow heater in action now? Yeah, we can. Okay, so the flow heater is on now, but I also hear that there is some increase in the sound level. What's that? So remember how we talked about the gas supply earlier? So we have a side channel blower, so a little basically pump that drives the air through the flow heater. And that is what you can hear in the sound level. But the flow heater itself is basically soundless, so that's a, a big plus. Yeah. Right. So uh, how long does it take to ramp it up? Typically for the 1100 degrees that we have set, between 10 and 15 minutes, in our case roughly 12 minutes. Yeah. And how hot does it get? We have the big advantage of 1100 degrees temperature in the outlet gas which is the highest you can have on the market. And that is also our, our trademark, the 1100 degrees, so. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty hot. Well, know? I mean, the, the amazing thing is, it's not only the, the heat that we generate, but also the accuracy. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can have an accuracy of plus minus one degree Celsius mm -hmm. um, on that level of 1100 degrees. So it's very precise um, mm -hmm. for your process. So, I mean, in the operating point, of course, you should be careful. I mean, you have a lot of hot air coming out, so don't, point it towards people, don't point it towards objects. Mm -hmm. Use the heat in your process, that's where it, it will okay. keep better. And uh, what all applications can a flow heater be used for? So the main applications are aluminium industry, mm -hmm. the steel industry, we have also supply to the glass industry, mm -hmm. and test stands because of the accuracy, um, it's, it's very good for test stands as well. Right, and uh, what about the uh, cooling down process? Because I think that's very important here. So the cooling down is actually more important than the heating up. Okay. Um, if you cool down too fast, you can damage the wire, the heating wire in there. And so we recommend a cooling down rate of 30 Kelvin per minute. Okay. And is there any extra information that one should be careful about? I mean, with a flow heater, you have a variety of everything. You, have a, you can go a variety of mass flows, temperatures. You can have a variety of gases. So it's really the best in the field. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in the end, that is what you need for your process. Great. Thank you so much for all the information today. And do you think we're ready to wrap it up? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So what have we learned today? Let's see if I remember everything correctly. Yeah. So Kantal flow heaters come in different sizes and can run on gas or air. The outlet temperatures can reach up to 1100 degrees Celsius. When mounting a Kantal flow heater, be very careful with the equipment and make sure you are very thorough when connecting it to gas or electricity. Uh, the patented heating cycle technology in the control system prolong the lifetime of the heater 
and also protects against face failures and stay away from hot gas and make sure you give it enough time to cool down because that also increases the lifetime of the heater. Did I miss out on anything? No, you didn't, Tanya. That was very impressive. Great. Very good. Thank you so much for all the information that you shared with us today. You're welcome. And thank you so much for watching. What are we going to do? <laughs> what are you she started it. <laughs> no, we both tried to grab the floor. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> okay.